What do you think of federal standards and initiatives within education like the Common Core, Race to the Top by President Obama, No Child Left Behind by former President Bush, et cetera, vis-a-vis -vis giving more power and control to states and individual school boards and districts in regards to standards and how and what we teach? Michael, we'll start with you. Uh, so I'm going to start off by saying that I have a slight problem with that, uh, that question because Common Core is a state-led effort uh, that is not part of any federal initiative. Uh, when Rise to the Top came, came through, uh, the Obama administration said, basically, we'll give additional funding to states who have college and career standards or career-ready standards. Well, a lot of states decided that the way they were going to implement that was going to be through Common Core. So the federal government did not pressure them to implement Common Core. The states decided to. Uh, so, so they had choice. They had the choice. Uh, and you look at states like Utah, who I, I spoke to the Utah uh, Department of Education uh, last year. They, we, we get a lot of kickback when we say Common Core. A lot of kickback because we, we that's why I have an issue with the question. A lot of people are saying it's a federal takeover. I've heard uh, it's a UN takeover. I've heard it's the Islamification of our public school system. These are all untrue. Uh, we need to start looking at Common Core for what it is. In Utah, we had the same kickback we saw here, saying the same things. What they did was they implemented the exact same standards, made math a little bit easier, and kept cursive in. And all of a sudden, every, uh, everything was okay. So, uh, you know, these types of of initiatives uh, when they're state-led can be a useful thing because they're the state saying this is what our college this, this is what our students need uh, and this is how we get them to be college and career ready so so what do you think about <coughs> state and federal uh, initiatives like common core race yeah. to the top that no that's uh, the thing i was going to go right into the state-led thing a lot of people don't know this but the two uh, organizations that made common core the standards that we all talk about is uh, the council of chief state school officers and the national governors association those that's the only um, state involvement that there was. Your governor went up there and they said, oh, the federal, mo the federal government is providing money for me to implement better standards and, and actually achieving them? Great. This is money leading our policy. This is nothing new. When, when common core pro-federal government standard advocates come out and say it's all about the, the, the standards and, and getting our education uh, standards higher so that our, our students can learn. They're not, they may say that up right up at the front, but in the background, you have the federal government providing money, making governors and other states um, do meaningless things like Common Core, for um, meaningless things like Common Core standards in order to, uh, to get money. For, exa for example, Common Core has been tried, the standards have been tried for two years now in New York. And in math and science, the students felt from the 79th percentile to the 39th percentile because just simply saying, hey, new standards, hey, a fourth grader should read at a fourth grade level, does not make education better. It centralizes the problem and it changes the tests that we already have, dumbing them down to make an industrial model of schooling. We need a free market, not federal standards. Uh, so I have to say a couple of things. One, the, the Common Core standards were created by a majority of teachers and school administrators. So whether or not they were adopted by the states and, and who adopted them, that's different. But a majority of what was created was by school administrators and teachers. Uh, you can go and read up, uh, even through their website, it'll, it'll tell you that. What is Common Core? It'll tell you how they, they came up with it. Uh, the second thing is, it's funny to me, because I, I was in the Senate Education Committee hearing uh, about Common Core when every major administrator, uh, teachers, uh, a lot of parents were in that room, they packed it full, and they all wanted these standards to be implemented, and the park test to, uh, to be implemented to show that our students were college and career ready. And uh, the only thing that could come up was the same things that you're saying, we, we, the federal takeover, we shouldn't, there's federal funding coming through it. Uh, to me, it's still a state-led initiative. You can choose Common Core, you can choose other college or career, study, uh, career uh, ready standards, you're gonna get that federal uh, funding as long as you have college and career standards. Common Core is not the enemy uh, in, in these arguments, it's the federal backing. Uh, and, and they're not backing just Common Core. Uh, the other thing I, I have to say uh, is that, <laughs> uh, 
in, in New York and, and some other cases, when we have uh, people now failing under these new standards, it's not because the standards aren't working, it's because the standards have now elevated the expectations. When we looked at the presentation about, about Common Core last year in the, in the, in the Senate, it, it basically said when you compare it to AIMS, only 50% of people who, who passed AIMS would, would be college and career ready under, let's say, the park test, uh, which, would, which, which would measure that. So it's not that students are getting worse, it's that now they're having a higher expectation, they're not meeting that expectation, and parents are going crazy because, oh no, my student is no longer the best student possible, they're not meeting the standards anymore. The problem aren't the standards, the problem is that we're not expecting enough of our students. They should be able to make those standards. Why aren't they? That's what we need to start addressing. There's no innovation when you <clears throat> already set the goalposts, and especially when the goalposts are arbitrary, like college and career ready. What does that mean? It, you only put uh, actual meaning to that when they go out, get out of the school, and actually try to go get a job or get into college, which is what I said in my, in my other question. Um, th and like you said, I think you see that the problem is the federal backing of this stuff. My solution to education is different than your solution, but the difference is, is that you're willing to use government force and money to push your alternative alternative on me and I'm not willing to do that. That's the real difference in education. I want a true free market system where the parent has full control of their kids' education and, and we test them based on if they can get jobs and if they can go to college, not based on some arbitrary standards from Washington, D.C. I don't think this sounds unreasonable, but uh, unfortunately in my party uh, or in the Republican Party and in the Democratic Party, we see people coming out uh, and advocating for these um, standards based on arbitrary goals, based on arbitrary things like we're going to be better, we're going to be college and career ready, and it, there's no true meaning behind it. It's just things on a piece of paper. We're not actually doing anything in the classroom that is different uh, uh, than we've been doing. It's just we're saying it from Washington, D.C., and that's what makes it different. Well, I think that's the beauty about Common Core is that they, the standards were made by educators and that it leaves local control over the curriculum. So the schools still have control of how we implement those standards. Uh, and this, like I said, the standards were created by educators. So it, if you're going to say uh, they're arbitrary, then everything that an educator knows is arbitrary. So I mean, there's going to be there's going to be a line there. Uh, mm -hmm. If the educators are saying this is where we need, especially in this state, when every major educator was saying that that we need to implement these standards, yeah. then. I, I, do we not listen to them? I mean, uh, well, that's the thing. Texas didn't listen to them. Texas rejected the Common Core, and yet Texas is the one that's doing exactly what the uh, successful education systems do. Do you want to go to college in a high school level? Okay, then we'll put you in an academic career path so that you can get to college. Do you want to do more technical field? Then we'll put you in that career path. Innovation comes from not having one answer and not having one standard for everybody. We're all different. We're all people. We need to not think about the problem in bureaucratic government terms. We well, need to think it in I think that's terms. one thing we can agree on is we need to get back to individualized education. So. Great. I think Great. that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for our next ASU Democrats versus Republicans debate. This is Nihal Krishan signing off from the Cronkite School.